Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, guys. Oh, my goodness. I've had a real crazy day today. I don't know about you guys, but I woke up this morning and got some bad news on the phone. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. It's all straightened out now. But I just want you guys to know that uh, my granddaughter is, is back in the United States. I thank you so much for all the prayers. Man, that's a long, long trip way to india and back and all over uh so i really appreciate the prayers guys uh we also had a prayer from claudia uh she's doing great had a successful surgery uh and i got a word from uh, winter over in indiana and she say uh malaya is really uh doing well and recovering and uh, they're working on her legs a little more, but she's talking and doing all kind of things. And Father has just recovered her. A real miracle, Father, people. A little miracle. So Yeshua is the miracle working God. And that's why I just love you so much, guys, for uh, trying out the book. He did what? All my uh, miracles and a lot of my uh, miracles, my little miracles. I mean, I have a lot more miracles I can talk about. But it's in the book, He Did What? Uh, buy my ebook titled He Did What from Amazon.com, Apple, Google, Kobo.com, Lulu.com, Bonds and Noble. Uh, the link is in front of you. It should be listed for $2.99. If you see it listed for more than that, let us know because a lot of scammers are going around. Absolutely true, people. Uh, download all my ebooks from fmcmi.org slash downloads. Uh, the print edition is here if you really want a copy. Uh, I just sent out some copies here yet today to some people. Uh, so if you want a copy, we do like, if you can't afford to give us a eight, $15 uh, donation to help with the ministry, be really wonderful to help with missions and um, homeless people and orphans and things of that nature. Uh, that's what all the funds are going towards the ministry. So we really appreciate each on uh, every uh, opportunity help you can give us. Uh, so uh, download all the books there, as I mentioned. Uh, also, uh, Son of Man Bible. Uh, download Gene's free e-Bible from Lulu.com, Kobo.com, Smashwords.com, Scribdy.com, FMCMI.org. Read the Son of Man Bible PDF for free. Download the Son of Man Bible computer Bible modules for free. Download free at BibleSupport.com and WordModules.com. And the King James Version Bible is here. Download Jean's free Son of the Virgin King James Ver King James Version. Sound almost like Virgin, doesn't it? The Virgin King James Version Bible Modular from BibleSupport.com, WordModules.com, FMCMI.org slash downloads. One module is the S O T V K J V and one has the Apocrypha S O T V kjva okay so uh thank you so much for that and click subscribe the like bell subscribe to our youtube channel click the like button click the notification bell we're noticing that a lot of the subscribers are leaving or disappearing i don't know a lot of other people on youtube is complaining about that too so if you want to uh, click subscribe again uh that'll be well and done um, <laughs> just subscribe again people i don't know what's going on a lot of things are happening with these uh youtube channels and things uh, but we really appreciate all you subscribers for the many years, all the supporters, okay? Uh, fair use notice is in front of you. Uh, also, Title 17, uh, Disclaimer, and the FBI notice. So I'm going to go ahead now and get into a song by uh, Barry and Batya uh, Seagal. I love their music so much, especially on Sabbath time. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and play a song, and we're going to get into the days of... Videos with deal with Israel, Monte Judah, uh, World News Report, Lewis in Florida, BP Earthwatch, Stan, uh, and also uh, I'm going to be showing you a glimpse of last day's video. Not going to play the whole video, but I wanted you to be aware of it and play it later. Uh, missions. Uh, going to be showing some wonderful prison videos today. Uh, prison photos, I'm sorry, photos that I got from Godfrey over in Kenya. Uh, doing a wonderful job out in the mission field. Uh, we're going to be getting into Mark 13 today. I'm going to read us a portion of Mark 13th chapter from 1 to 27 verse. Uh, and then also ending the glories of the heavenly world uh, coming from Maranatha. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started now. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. So let me go ahead and get started. 
go ahead and mute this out. <clears throat>
TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel rescues over 200 Israeli citizens and local Jews from Ethiopia's conflict-ridden Amhara region. The domestic intelligence agency ISA, or Shin Bet, detained an Iranian Jew who landed in Israel with the intention of spying on sensitive sites for the Islamic Republic of Iran. The United States and Iran agreed on a prisoner exchange deal in yet another instance of the latter's successful policy of hostage diplomacy. Israel, in collaboration with authorities in Addis Ababa, extracted some 200 Israeli citizens as well as local Ethiopian Jews from conflict zones in northern Ethiopia. A total of 204 Israeli citizens and Ethiopian Jews eligible to immigrate to the Jewish state under the Israeli law of return were extracted from the cities of Gondar and Bahirdar in the Amhara region. Fierce battles erupted last week in Amhara region after local militias sought to resist the federal Ethiopian government's announced decision to dismantle regional forces across the country. The battles, which reportedly caused many civilian casualties, prompted a decision by Jerusalem to extricate stranded Israelis and local Jews who are seeking to immigrate to Israel. After days of both challenging and complex efforts, in collaboration with federal authorities in Addis Ababa, the Israeli Foreign Ministry, in collaboration with Jerusalem's National Security Council and Prime Minister's Office, succeeded to execute a rescue mission for the 204 Israelis and local Jews who found themselves in battle zones that have been cut off from the rest of Ethiopia for over nine days. The State of Israel looks after its citizens wherever they are. In recent days, Israeli citizens and people eligible for Aliyah from Ethiopia became in distress in areas of combat. I directed that they be brought out of there. I would like to thank the National Security Council and the personnel of the Prime Minister's Office, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Jewish Agency for their quick, quiet and, above all, successful action. The people are now on their way from Gondar and Bahir Dar to Addis and from there they will leave for the State of Israel. We will welcome them here with warmth and blessings. Welcome to the State of Israel. Before leaving Ethiopia for Israel, Jerusalem's top diplomat held a phone conversation with the Israeli ambassador to Ethiopia, who highlighted the gratitude of the people being rescued. In other news, in a counterintelligence operation, the Israel Security Agency, or ISA, arrested an Iranian Jew on suspicion of spying for the Ayatollah regime. The overnight arrest was made when the Iranian spy, who has family in Israel, landed at Ben Gurion International Airport. Upon exiting the flight, he was detained by the ISA and subsequently interrogated for several hours, during the course of which he confessed that he had arrived in Israel for the purpose of gathering information at the behest of Iranian intelligence. Moreover, according to the ISA, the Iranian spy met with Iranian Defense Ministry officials who briefed him and provided him with tools for conducting espionage before traveling to Israel. It is interesting to know that following this investigation, the alleged Iranian spy was barred from entering Israel. Instead of getting incarcerated, however, he was placed on a flight on his journey back to the Islamic Republic. According to the ISA, this incident is part of a broad Iranian effort to facilitate espionage rings in Israel alongside an Iranian disinformation campaign intended to deepen domestic rifts in Israel. The ISA, together with its partners at the defense establishment, continue to work unceasingly with determination to counter any Iranian attempts to operate against Israel, whether through terror, espionage or cyber. Meanwhile, in the West Bank district of Samaria, IDF, in cooperation with the ISA, operated in the Palestinian town of Tulkarem as part of counter-terror activity overnight. During the course of this operation, which aimed to locate and apprehend suspected terror operatives, a terror cell affiliated with the Iranian proxy, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, alongside operatives of the Fatah-affiliated Al-Aqsa brigades, engaged Israeli Special Operation Forces, who responded with live fire. 
While thankfully no injuries were reported among the Israeli forces as a result of this exchange of fire, one Palestinian operative who was identified as affiliated with the Al-Aqsa Brigade sustained fatal wounds, while eight other terror operatives sustained separate degrees of injuries. In other news, the United States and the Islamic Republic of Iran have reached an agreement to secure the release of five American hostages who were incarcerated by the Islamic Republic on unsubstantiated allegations in exchange for several jailed Iranian nationals who operated at the regime's behest along with the transfer of $6 billion in frozen Iranian oil revenue. As a first stage of this agreement, which was mediated by Oman and in collaboration with Qatar, the Ayatollah regime agreed to release the five dual American-Iranian citizens to house arrest, which, according to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, serves as a positive step that will hopefully lead to their return home to the United States. Alongside the release of six Iranians who, according to reports, were serving prison sentences for violating sanctions on Iran, the Biden administration has also agreed to transfer roughly six billion U.S. dollars of frozen Iranian funds that are held by South Korea. These funds will be transferred to the Central Bank of Qatar, from which the Ayatollah regime will be able to gain access to pay vendors for humanitarian purposes such as food and medicine. And while the allocation of these funds could effectively repurpose existing money for other activities, Secretary Blinken insists that this deal does not grant Iran any sanctions relief. So this is a, this is a positive step. But um, I don't want to get ahead of its, uh, its conclusion because there's more work to be done to actually bring them home. My belief is that uh, this is the beginning of the end of their nightmare and the nightmare that their families have experienced. Um, I'm also not going to get into any of the details about uh, what we're doing or engaged on because I don't want to jeopardize the completion of this process and the return home of, uh, uh, of our fellow citizens. Um, let me be clear about a couple of things, though. In any uh, event, in any respect, Iran will not be receiving any sanctions relief. And in any instance where we would engage in um, such efforts to bring Americans home from Iran, um, Iran's own funds uh, would be used uh, and transferred to restricted accounts such that the monies can only be used for humanitarian purposes, which, as you know, is permitted under our sanctions. There's an exemption for humanitarian that, uh, uh, that's there from the start. Um, we will continue to enforce all of our sanctions. It is important to know that the five American captives will be allowed to leave Iran only once the $6 billion arrive in the designated Qatari bank account, a process expected to take four to six weeks. Moreover, during a meeting of representatives of the BRICS nations in Tehran earlier this week, Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian insisted that the prisoner exchange deal was completely separate from other talks being held with the West and that the Islamic Republic was ready to move forward with the deal's implementation. military coup is being planned in Israel. Iran is now moving anti-ship missiles and drones to threaten other ships in the Straits of Hormuz. Iran is urging Hezbollah in Lebanon to continue provocations against Israel's northern border. The UN Security Council will vote later this month on extending the UNIFIL peacekeeping force in southern Lebanon. And the U.S. is now negotiating with Iran for a prisoner exchange, including the release of $6 billion to Iran. Poland is moving thousands of troops to the border with Belarus. Messianic World Update begins now. Shalom everyone, I'm Monty Judah with Lion and Land Ministries. Welcome to another edition of Messianic World Update. Today's date is Friday, August the 11th of the year 2023. In Israel, there's a very alarming news. It's at the rumor stage at this point that Ehud Barak, a former prime minister and military general, 
is talking to other military personnel in Israel with the idea of upending Netanyahu's rule of Israel, essentially a military coup of sorts. As you know, in Israel, some of the reservists are refusing to serve their duty because of the judicial overhaul taking place with the Netanyahu government passing that in the Knesset. And Israel's been suffering from protests now for many weeks. And there is an element, the liberal elements within Israel absolutely do not want to see the Netanyahu government go forward, even though they were voted in by a majority of the citizens of Israel. And despite that, we hear all of this talk about rebellion and now a possible military coup. I don't know that it will happen, but I know that anytime you have that kind of discussion going on in the land, it's a very serious matter for Israel. We need to pray for Israel concerning this matter. This could be very disruptive to the state of Israel. And of course, uh, Israel's enemies are watching all of this, uh, licking their chops, so to speak. Iran is beginning to take steps to assert themselves even more. Last week, I shared with you how the U.S. has moved a Marine Expeditionary Unit of a whole bunch of Marines into the Persian Gulf. The idea is for them to be a small detachments to be put on commercial ships traveling through the Straits of Hormuz to stop the Iranians from coming out and seizing those ships or harassing those ships with their fast boats. It, uh, Iran, now in response to the U.S. move, bringing the Marines in, has decided to move anti-ship missiles closer to the Straits of Hormuz and to bring in more drones to threaten the ships from the air uh, in that. So the tensions over traveling through the Straits of Hormuz are becoming more and more pronounced there with between the U.S. and Iran. Furthermore, Iran has been telling Hezbollah in Lebanon to continue to execute provocations against Israel's northern border. Provocations, they mean that they've sent uh, men across the wire, uh, gone in and set bombs inside of Israel, terrorist acts. They even shot an anti-tank weapon at an IDF patrol traveling along the border. Israel is looking at reinforcing that border. They want to build a concrete wall as opposed to just a fence uh, separating Lebanon from Israel. And Iran would love to have Hezbollah begin to irritate Israel in that regard, just like Gaza with Hamas does to Israel from down in the Gaza Strip. This is uh, causing great alarm in Israel from a defensive standpoint. And in fact, uh, this month, the UN Security Council is getting ready to decide and vote on whether or not the UNIFIL peacekeeping force that is in southern Lebanon, which is the border, the, the buffer between Hezbollah and Israel, as to whether or not they're going to extend their mission to keep those international military forces in there as a force separating the two. UNIFIL, as of this day, is not doing a very good job of keeping Hezbollah out of the border and away from the fence. And so Israel is now sending a delegation to the UN Security Council to explain that they want UNIFIL to be extended. They want to reinstitute them for another year as a peacekeeping force, but they want to beef that force up where it truly will enforce that, that buffer zone and keep Hezbollah and other terrorists out of it. Uh, at the moment, uh, Hezbollah is parking some of their stuff, setting up tents and observation points in that buffer zone, and the UNIFIL is not stopping them or preventing them from doing it. In effect, UNIFIL is not doing anything except standing in the way. Uh, and there are concerns on the part of the northern communities in Israel that is just a skip and a jump. If um, Hezbollah decides to send some combat brigades across that fence and attack the people in their homes in those northern communities, it's a very serious situation. We know that Iran is promoting Hezbollah to continue to do more. And given the turmoil that's in Israel at the moment, it seems to be emboldening Nasrallah, the head 
of the Hezbollah and emboldening Iran to do even more things. So that is building up even more tension for it. As I shared with you before, um, Gallant, the um, defense minister, the, uh, the IDF chief of staff, Halevi, they've been making statements warning Lebanon about this whole matter. And last week I shared with you about several nations have asked their citizens to leave Lebanon. We're talking about United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Germany, and so forth, because they know that things are building in Lebanon and Gallant. And the IDF have said that if there is a serious provocation, in other words, there's an attack that comes across the border, if they start shooting missiles across, if they start sending troops across the border, then Israel fully intends to decimate Lebanon. In fact, their exact words were, we'll take Lebanon back to the Stone Age. And they specifically have warned Lebanon, the country, that they are responsible for whatever Hezbollah does. If Hezbollah does something down in the south, the whole nation of Lebanon will pay the price. As we speak, there is no leader in Lebanon. The leader that was in there resigned, didn't want to be a part of the mess, so they're kind of leaderless, and Hamas is exploiting that, excuse me, uh, Hezbollah is exploiting that situation in Lebanon and all it's caused is the northern border of Israel to become more and more volatile. Now, for us, that's a very significant development because we know there's a great prophecy in Ezekiel 38-39 about an invasion from the north that comes into the northern part of Israel. So we watch that particular border very closely, the threats coming to Israel, because we have a very specific prophecy that deals with that battle that will come in the future. Poland is now moving about 6,000 of their NATO troops to the border with Belarus, and the reason they're doing it is because the Wagner Group, under the control of, the, of Russia, has decided to move about 3,800 of their troops into Belarus and set up about 130 miles from the border with Poland. It appears that Putin may be thinking about doing the same thing that Iran does with their proxies of harassing Israel. In this case, you could have Putin taking the Wagner Group and harassing other NATO nations and other nations bordering on Belarus, causing more confusion with NATO over the Russian-Ukraine war. The Wagner Group, as you recall, used to be fighting in Ukraine. Uh, because of the turmoil with the Russian generals not supporting them, they made a trip up to Russia. It looked like they were going to be threatening Putin. All of a sudden, they came to a halt. We thought, oh my gosh, uh, Putin will certainly execute this guy. No, it turns out he's in good graces. The president of Belarus uh, negotiated a, an understanding. And so the head of the Wagner Group has now moved into Poland with his troops, and they have a new mission for it. This is going to cause more trouble for NATO, and NATO at the moment is trying to prevent any of this harassment on the border and, and the conflicts that could be emerging and growing between, essentially, Russia with Belarus to support uh, into NATO countries there in the east. Let me take you back to just also for a moment, why do we have this intense problem in Israel at the moment? Uh, the coalition government that Netanyahu's leading is conservative, and they have the religious parties are a part of that government coalition. The liberal elements uh, of Israel are very opposed to the religious parties having any say in the government. The fear is that they want to move away from democracy and they want to set up a theocracy. A theocracy, of course, is a government controlled by God. Well, they think that the religious parties, they would be the only voice of what God has to say, and they would be in charge, and they think they would be highly restrictive of the freedoms of the liberals. And I know this is going to come as a shock to you, but the liberal elements within Israel are as liberal as they get, uh, to and including the LBGQTQ, whatever, uh, activities going on in the world. And they also include 
they don't want any restrictions with regard to Sabbath and holy days. In Israel, for example, on Yom Kippur, the whole place shuts down on Sabbath. They close shops and businesses. The liberals don't want that. And the religious parties, of course, they want to make sure that's instituted in law within the land and that everybody follows it. They want to shut down trains and transportation on, on Sabbath, and the liberals don't want it. And they fear that with the religious parties being in government leadership, that more of that will take place and it will irritate them even more. It's a, it's a spiritual conflict in Israel. Are we going to follow the God of Israel, or are we going to follow what men want to say and what other nations do in, in disregarding what God has said and in his laws and commandments? So that's the conflict. Now, let me just share with you, there is a very clear prophecy that says at the end of the ages, the, the major sign of the end of the ages has to do with there's going to be an altar on the Temple Mount. It will be doing the daily sacrifice. It's pretty clear at this point that the religious parties, they would be in favor of doing something like that. And the liberals would be opposed to doing something like that. So you see the conflict between the religious and the liberal. and But yet, at the same time, we know the prophecy says this is going to happen. So this conflict that we're seeing going on in Israel is the very nature of the conflict that's going to be at the start of the Great Tribulation. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Great Tribulation is getting ready to start very quickly because we know for a fact that Benjamin Netanyahu wants to maintain the status quo on the Temple Mount. That means don't do anything. Uh, but it might be that in the future that he will change his position on the status quo of the Temple Mount and allow the Jews to have a portion of the Temple Mount, which, by the way, has already been ruled in their favor, and it's just for security reasons he's not agreeing to it yet. Let's say that the, the religious parties influence him enough and he changes his position, and suddenly Israel gets a piece of the Temple Mount, they rebuild the altar, and they begin to do the daily sacrifice. Well, you are now talking about the very sign that Yeshua gave to the disciples when they asked him, what will be the sign of the end and the sign of your coming soon? That's the one we keep watching very closely. What happens on the Temple Mount with regard to reestablishment of an altar? Those are the issues that we're watching going on in modern Israel today. Those are the things that are pending, just as the prophecies say. That's our report for this week. I want to remind you, that we have the fall holidays coming up, and, and we'd love to have you join Line of Land Ministries for the Feast of Tabernacles here in Oklahoma. But of course, to do that, you have to register. So if you're watching this broadcast and thinking about the possibility of coming to the Feast of Tabernacles with us, go and register now. We need you to register so we know that you're planning on coming. Also, we want to encourage you to remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on our site and let us know you're out there. We appreciate your viewership, and we're here to try to serve you and encourage you in the Lord. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is August 11th, 2023, 2.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. In breaking news, India's Chandrayaan 3 enters lunar orbit. We have video of them actually orbiting the moon. India's Sharayan 3 rover reached lunar orbit on August 5th, sharing new photos and videos of the moon ahead of its planned August 23rd landing. India's Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft snapped this photo while entering orbit around the moon on August 5th, 2023. India's Chandrayaan 3 lunar lander has returned its first images from the moon after entering orbit around our nearest neighbor. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, 
released images on Sunday, August 6, showing that the spacecraft had reached its destination ahead of a lunar landing attempt expected on August 23rd. Chenrayun-3 launched on July 14th, heading into an initially highly elliptical Earth orbit. It then gradually raised its orbit before making a burn on July 31st that set it on course for the moon. The spacecraft successfully entered orbit around our natural satellite on Saturday, August 5th, according to the ISRO. The spacecraft will conduct further engine burns to bring it into a circular track about 60 miles above the surface of the moon, a week ahead of the expected landing attempt. The newly released images, which ISRO stitched into a 45-second video, which we're about to watch, show the solar array of the Shenrayan-3 spacecraft in the foreground. The moon, with features including large impact craters and lunar mare or seas, is in the background. The roughly $73 million Chenrayun-3 mission aims to make a precise landing in the vicinity of the moon's south pole. If it is successful, India will join the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China as the only nations to perform a soft lunar landing. They would be the first nation to make a soft lunar landing on the south pole of our satellite, the moon. The mission's lander, known as Vikram also carries a small rover called Pregyan. The pair will spend the best part of a lunar day, about 14 Earth days, conducting service operations and experiments before succumbing to the deep cold of the lunar nighttime. Ladies and gentlemen, this only cost them $73 million, the entire mission, not $73 billion. What is going on with the U.S. space program? Sounds like another huge slush fund to me. God bless you guys. Share, subscribe, and always remember, anything is possible in Bizarro World. My name is Louis, and God bless every single one of you. Today is August 10, 2023, and welcome to the Grand Spring News Channel. All right, guys, so we have some breaking news updates, very important information coming out. If you can, please share this video. And it says here, the 4-6 declares Hawaii fire a major disaster, unblocks federal aid. Once again, this is coming out from the White House. Let me show you the video really quick here, guys. If you can, please continue praying for the people out there in Hawaii. Look at that. Man. Ooh. When I first uh, saw this footage, I thought it was Iceland or like a volcano. Come to find out, this is Hawaii. Wow. Hmm. I just posted a video not too long ago. The number is at 36. You have houses that was built back in the 1700s gone. And I'm getting information here, guys. Now, I'm not saying this is the real deal, but a lot of people are sharing it. But we got more information. This picture was released not too long ago. I mean, ugh. Hmm. Now, again, I'm not saying this is the real deal. I'm not saying it is the real deal. I'm just showing you guys uh, all this going on here. Uh, this photo is circulating right now. Apparently, this uh, beam was captured before the event. The event. I'm using cold words. Follow me on this one. You guys already know I... I don't know. Uh, so I read the comments on my last video. A lot of people saying that it's DEW. Um, this kind of reminds me of California. 
It reminds me of California. Because everything is completely, look, the vehicles, all that is gone. But but uh, you still ha uh, have the palm trees. You still have the uh, the the light pole, not the street light, but the uh, light pole with the trans transformers. That thing is still standing, and that's dry wood. Usually that thing would be like candle, just in flame. But uh, it's just perfectly, like, never been touched. Um, so, again, we're going to see what's going on here. Emergency declared. Federal funds is going to be released, possibly National Guard. Well, there are National Guard deployed. This is one of the Sleeping Giant states. Um, so if you can, please share this video. Um, wow. Mm. of you today is august 11 2023 and welcome to the grand spring news channel all right guys so we have some breaking news updates some very important information coming out if you can please share this video and it says here sandstorm turns the sky red in morocco but it's not only that guys multiple buildings trees power lines were impacted and it was an 18 year old that passed away from this so we do have all the information and we also have some more breaking news updates morocco reports a record high temperature of 50.4 celsius once again that's 122.7 fahrenheit that is brutal brutal hot temperature at the same time the sky is completely red now looking good and uh, we don't want to see any wildfire going on, guys. But there is strong winds going on along with the uh, sandstorm. Uh, once again, we need to continue praying for a lot of people in this area. So from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. This is not too far from La Palma. Yeah, it's not too far from La Palma. All right, we're going to see what's going on in this story here. Let me just read some of these comments right James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is August 11th, 2023, 3.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, everyone knows that Canada is on fire. Everyone should know the Congo is on fire over in Africa. Everyone knows that Maui has been on fire. Everyone also knows that parts of the United States have started to catch fire, especially the northwest and west coast of the U.S. and all around Wawa Springs, the world's largest shield volcano. So, is it surprising that the Amazon, too, is on fire? Greenpeace International tweeted this out. The Brazilian Amazon is still burning at an alarming rate. We must switch from an economic model that is based on the destruction of the forest and the exploitation of natural resources to a system that values forest standing. Now I am confused about our economic model that they are referring to. Probably harvesting timber from the Amazon? That would stop fires, especially if done correctly. Let's take a look at what they have to say here. New footage from Greenpeace Brazil shows despite the significant decrease in deforestation, forests are still burning at an alarming rate. As you can see, the Amazon is on fire. The Amazon forest is vital for the climate. We must switch from an economic model that is based on the destruction of the forest and exploitation of natural resources. To a system that values the force standing. Again, I'd like to know what that economic basis and standing is. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we also know the Amazon is also on fire. I guess the entire world is on fire. Fire and brimstone, the end of this age. 
Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world. Yeah, guys, interesting, interesting, interesting. Everything's on fire. I'm going to put that in my title today. Everything's on fire. You know, Yeshua said it would be fire this time. It wouldn't be all oh, floods, waters all over the whole world. It's going to be fire. So now we're having all these fires. And, uh, oh, wow, we're going to get into the Bible today in Mark 13 and look at some of these signs that Yeshua mentioned, uh, as he mentioned in Matthew 24 and other chapters. Uh, revelation in different places. Uh, I'm going to go on over here now though and get started with uh, this uh, message coming from BP Earth Watch. And after BP Earth Watch, we're going to go to Stan uh, Prophecy where he's talking about nothing can stop it. And you know, I was just mentioning about the bricks, the bricks. Uh, so he's going to be talking about the bricks. And so uh, let me go on over here now and find uh, this um, uh, material coming from BP Earth Watch. And then we're going to get into um, that about the bricks and uh, missions and the Bible and all these things. Uh, I know I want to talk about this brother here, but I'm not going to probably have time to show it on this video. But I do want to mention it. Uh, my visitation with Jesus and what he told me about my thought life. Uh, please go and watch this. It's not but 21 minutes uh, from last day's uh I think the guy named Brandon, I'm not sure if I'm saying it. I think his name Brandon. I'm trying to get familiar with his name. But uh, please go and listen to him and his son. This is his son here, and he have a lot to say too. So I'm going to leave this in the description box. But let me go on over here and get on over here to uh, world update here from the weather. Let me go ahead and read it out again, okay? All right. The 11th, 2023. Guys, you're looking at current satellite images. It is now 1.56 p.m. Central Time here in the U.S. And this is from the African coast over into the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see tips of South America and Cuba and uh, Central America here. Now, the, what you're seeing here in this system, it hasn't been named. We've been watching it as it came across the Atlantic. Remember last week? We, there were two systems that were not named, and I was watching both of them. This one came through. It still hasn't been named. It's still being uh, uh, torn apart by some upper-level wind shear, and you can see coming off the east coast here that it, more than likely this will turn up and move out into the ocean. Now, again, it's not a tropical system or anything like that, but what happened, if you remember in the video, last um yet yeah, the first of the week maybe it was about the two systems out there then there was a high pressure area that was over the atlantic ocean down through this area and what we were talking about was that is what would steer and actually in the end of the week excuse me it was coming up right through the border of texas and louisiana and that would be a steering mechanism for these storms what happened now in this area you're seeing what's called a saharan dust layer and it's uh it, it takes out the moisture in the storms and prohibits the strengthening and that's how these storms work the warm water warm and more situations now the cycle of these saharan dust layers changes you'll it'll come out for a few days you'll see a break in it then you'll see another series of these storms come over or clouds come over they're not storms but uh, during the week when I was watching it it had a large Saharan sand cloud that was above the storms if you guys look back at the video you'll see it and the high pressure pushed all of that sand which looked like this right here down into the storms and pretty much kept them from developing at all like like I said this is the room that's here turn that off so guys we're setting up for superstorm I said that in that video look at what's coming off of Africa this is along the uh, equator in that area where you've got the uh, convergence zone from southern hemisphere to the uh, northern and that's where a lot of the Atlantic hurricanes develop you got sand coming out or dust layer coming out above them now 
There was a break in the high pressure system, so we don't know how this will work out yet. But what I wanted to do with this video, a couple things, was talk about whether you're in the Gulf states like we are, and we've seen our share of tornado of hurricanes, excuse me, or along the East Coast or wherever you're at in the Yucatan or in Cuba, any of these places in Mexico that um, you've been hit before. We know something big is coming. We've got now less than a month to the peak of hurricane season on September the 10th. What are you going to need? We'll, is it things that you don't have? Of folks along our coastline in Florida, Alabama, and so forth, Texas, Louisiana, you've had to board up things. You've had to rush to Home Depot or wherever, 84 Lumber, whatever it was, and get supplies. You had to get batteries. You had to get extra water. You had to gas up your vehicles. You had to get your generators ready. Make sure you had everything charged up and some extra candles and things like that. But, uh, guys, when... If we do have a superstorm that comes over uh, Africa and out through the Atlantic, it will be a big news story. Here's my point. And uh, people are going to start rushing to get these supplies. So don't be caught off guard. We know we're going into the peak here in less than a month. and But it lasts until the end of November. But uh, any of the supplies that we're talking about, if you don't get a, hit by a, tor a hurricane then good but all of those supplies you can use so make sure you got some extra food and all of those things now looking at africa right now there's military and political chaos you know niger has revolted against the colonization uh agendas of both the west and europe okay and france is heavily involved in niger which is one of the central countries and then along the west coast you basically have a western backed nato of uh, african countries that's not what they call it but that's basically what it is they have enough political power the west and and uh, europe to control the elections and the governments and all of that well that's in chaos right now you had um newland go over which, what is that? She's second down from uh, Blinken. But anyway, Newland went over, and according to mainstream media, and I reported on it, that uh, she didn't get to meet with the exile president that after the coup, and she didn't get to meet with the new leader, the military leader. And uh, she came back and said basically that. But really, what was what's going on there? Think about who would benefit if you had a civil war in Africa, millions and millions of people, would it, would it be Africa that would benefit from it or would it be the colonizers? In other words, millions and millions of people get killed. The, usually it's the poor people that are drafted and sent out to slaughter. But who would benefit? What, and what's happening with France, they've cut off Russia by all of their sanctions well not just France but France is it's important because they've cut off that supply of gas and oil but they get a lot out of the African nation you get ukrainium you got the ability to uh, have steel mills and things like that there and grains but what is uh, the agenda, overall agenda now they won't control over it. we know that the UK France and all that's been going on for hundreds of years come in and actually take advantage of the situation there. And but the, the tide is turning. Africa's awake, and they are actually backed by someone that uh, is offering to be a, a trade partner with them, help them, and have a free trade, trading grain for whatever the bear needs, right? And so they do have superior military cooperation, and I think China's kind of right there with them. But again, who would benefit? It wouldn't be Africa. If you wiped out a lot of the people, but you still had the colonizers in charge, it would just be less people to feed and worry about and have worry about an uprising. But uh, I think Africa is wising up and they've seen and had enough of it. And if you think about the bear, if you heard, of, have any of you heard about the Kinzhal missile? I think you have. It's uh, hypersonic 
it'll run at 10 Mach, or Mach 10, which is 2 miles per second. Nothing can touch it, nothing can really see it coming, and it's steerable. It can have both nuclear tips or conventional explosives. And four were launched uh, today into the Kiev area, Kiev area of the uh, other country that's uh, in the conflict. And they took out a large concentration of uh, military experts from around the world and trainer, trainees and people that are getting ready to fly the F-16s, which they were warned not to bring into that conflict. But guys, we are seeing demons taking over. They've never left since the beginning. But now we've, we've never seen this total demonic activity involved with totally or nuclear uh, capabilities by these nations. Now, Babylon is going to fall, we know that. And right now, where would the queen of Babylon be? Some say Rome, some say other places. But guys, what nation is the most corrupt? Who has the least morals? Who has the most destruction on the kids? Look at what they're doing everywhere. And, and you know that with what we're seeing, we've got extreme heat. Guys, right now, the heat index is 119. It was 122 about 30 minutes ago. It's 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Over in the uh, Gulf there, uh, Iraq and Iran, in that area, they were reaching 156 heat index, breaking records. One was 146, and on the map I looked at yesterday, one was 156. And like I said, I've seen it here, and I think it broke records last month at 132 heat index. The earth is heating up. Canada, uh, Canada's paying the price. The U.S. is paying the price of this heating, not man-made heating. This is... Uh, from weakened shields, increased solar activity. But God said he was going to take Babylon down. What nation right now is the most corrupt? And really you have a whole group of them. You add in France and the U.K. and the U.S. And you can see that iniquity bounds everywhere, guys. But remember, Christ said if he did not intervene in the end times, no flesh would be saved. So don't be on the side that's cursing God for something you knew was coming on Babylon. Realize that this is his supernatural way, or more natural way of bringing the end to the demonic possession on this planet and the destruction we see. We're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe. Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I'm going to title this one, Nothing Can Stop It. That's actually part of one of the uh, articles I've got for you today, Nothing Can Stop It. Talking about U.S., EU says are in big trouble. Big trouble coming because the bricks and oil. So it says a country is expressing their intent to join bricks. Account for about 60%, let that soak in. About 60% of the known global oil and gas reserves. At the very best, this means that 60% of the world's oil sales, I hope you're listening, 60% of the world's oil sales will take place in a currency other than the U.S. dollar once BRICS brings their new gold-backed currency to life. Now, I'm pretty sure that Hal Turner hasn't heard of Prophecy Club he probably has not heard of Shane Warren. Probably doesn't know about Shane Warren's vision back in 2010, where he saw the dollar become worthless as leaves blowing in the wind. And the thing that starts that is when they start selling oil in some other currency other than the dollar. So it has now started. Actually, it started August 24th of 2022. But the tsunami is about to hit our shores. 
He goes on to say the official announcement surrounding the development of this new currency is scheduled to be made on August 22. August 22nd. Okay, so that's only a few weeks away. The currency is not created yet. That's the reason it hasn't hit our shores yet. The currency is not created yet and is not available yet. But this will change and it will come like lightning bolt out of the blue for the United States. That's what Jason Meeks said. That's what uh, oh, several other people have said, that this fall of the dollar happens almost overnight. As things are right now, all oil sales around the world are done only in U.S. dollars. Well, there's been a few of those that have been not in U.S. dollars. So every country that needs oil or which sells oil conducts all of those transactions only in dollars. That means every country on the planet needs to hold physical dollars in its central bank so that the country can buy the oil and gas it needs. But once the new BRICS currency comes online, all those excess dollars being held all over the world will start to come back to the United States. Thus, the value of our currency will drop against all of those other currencies. This is a really good way to say it. I thought he, he worded this really well. Thus, the value of our currency will drop against all of those other currencies because nobody will want or need our dollars anymore. Now, you may be saying, okay, so, I mean, how does that affect us? He answers that. Now, bear in mind, the U.S. does not manufacture much of anything anymore. We import all of what we buy. I'm going to read that again because that's the kicker that a lot of people haven't thought of. Now, bear in mind that the U.S. does not manufacture much of anything anymore. We import all of our stuff. Now, like, for example, I'm going to talk about something that I really like, but we don't offer it here at Profits of Club. I'm probably not going to. There is a lantern that is called 30-day duro or 60-day duro. I prefer the 60-day duro myself. Now, I do not know this for certain because I haven't actually talked to the manufacturer, but my guess is that they want to have their new idea, this new way of making a lantern that with six D-cell batteries turned on in normal use, it typically will last 60 days. That's amazing. So they go to about the only manufacturer in the world that can make that, that would be China. But the way China does business is, sure, we'll make your lantern, sure. We'll make your whatever widget is you want made. But they also then, once they get the way to do it, is they turn around and they continue making it. Maybe they'll change the outside color a little bit. Maybe they'll change the name on it a little bit. But they then start selling your idea to all of the other places around the globe. Only the difference is you don't get any royalties. You don't make any money from it. China makes all of the rest of the money from your idea. Yes, they'll make some more of them for you. They'll continue to make them for you, but they also continue to sell them. That's cheating, but that's what China does. They're probably the world's largest cheating nation, in my opinion. So that means that nobody can compete with them. And one thing I like about China is if it comes from China, you can rest assured it's about the cheapest way to manufacture it. But one of the things I don't like about things made in China is it's just about the cheapest way <laughs> that you can make it. A lot of things bought in China, they don't last anymore. They're junk. When I was a kid, I hated to get toys that said made in Japan because they were just junk. Today... A lot of things made in Japan are some of the best things. A lot of things made in China are the cheapest things, but they're not the best things. If you want the best, I don't know who makes it now. It used to be America made it, but now that's not the case anymore. Okay, so what's it saying? It's saying that since we have to buy almost everything from some other country other than America, that means that when the dollar starts falling, Everything we buy, that includes cars, that includes houses. I mean, we don't even grow our own lumber anymore. 
Most of our lumber, sad to say, is imported from other nations, Canada mostly. But anyway, the point is, we're about to see things get really, really, really expensive. Now, <laughs> that's why I suggest you get yourself some cornerstoneassetmetals.com gold and silver, or get yourself some wheat berries to make your own bread at josephkitchen.com. Okay, let's go on. I'm going to reread that last sentence. The U.S. does not manufacture much of anything anymore. We import everything we use. So the value of the dollar against the foreign currencies, the cost of things will be utterly skyrocketing because our currency is worth less, soon to be worthless, and less compared to other countries' currencies. We will see hyperinflation here in the United States. And he says, I suspect it could rival the Weimar Republic just before it collapsed. You remember stories, as I have, where the person in Germany, this after World War II, would take a wheelbarrow full of marks to the grocery store to buy a loaf of bread, and they said that if you left it sitting outside, you'd come back and the wheelbarrow was gone, but they would just dump the marks out on the ground because the marks were less value than the wheelbarrow. And that's coming to America. Why? Because our God is not among us. Because we've sinned, and we've turned away from God in America. I mean, as one that has tried to build a church now, been going for 17 years here in the Plano, Texas area, uh, it takes a bulldozer to drag someone into church these days and a feather to run them off. I can't tell you how many times I've said that. You do anything wrong, I'm out of here. There's no more forgiveness among Christians, congregation members, I could name names. People that hugged me and Leslie's neck and then walked out with a huff, and I was talking to my older brother <laughs> up in Washington, and he said, yeah, and here's the thing. He said, if you go to them and say, why'd you leave? They don't even have a good reason. But most of the time, they won't even tell you. In other words, Christians, the Christians aren't doing it right, but most people aren't even Christians. Let's go on. Once this gets done and oil sales begin in the new BRICS currency, the United States will economically collapse and nothing can stop it.
Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I love those Kenyans, man, <laughs> those Africans. Oh, my God, they dance. I got to get that dance. Okay, guys, uh, I want to show you something real quick before I get into the Bible. Uh, this uh, wonderful, wonderful pictures from Godfrey. Uh, I tell you, this brother is working over there in Kenya. Uh, very hard working guy. I'm telling you, he always talking to me all the time, texting, talking, what's up and whatever. Uh, but I'm telling you guys, God is using him a lot. I mean, over in Kenya, him and Joseph being used over there like you never would believe could happen. Uh, God has been uh, inviting him. He's been having other pastors in the area, inviting him to go into the prisons. And this is what's been happening. I just got these pictures today uh, from over there in another area, another location of prisoners uh, they went to take humanitarian needs and Bibles or whatever they have there to give them. Uh, and so I just thought it was a wonderful picture to show you guys. A lot going on Worship over there in, in Kenya. The How about that, huh? And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a Godfrey right here. I don't know all the brothers uh, with him here. But I tell you guys, we are in the end at the end, and God is using him in a mighty, mighty, mighty way. Uh, so... I just want you guys to know uh, to be praying for him uh, as they go out. See all around the, uh, the area here, another big picture here where everybody's sitting around. Uh, I really, really uh, appreciate all the prayers, guys, all the prayers, okay? Because we really need to be praying for Godfrey right now. I, I, I never seen the smile on his face before when he was getting invited to go to the prisons. He had never went to the prisons. And now they're trying to work together uh, to cover all the prisoners there. Uh, areas in Kenya so him and Joseph gonna be doing a mighty work and other pastors so be absolutely praying for that situation guys because time is short and soon and very soon it will be a famine in the land for not food and water but what for the Word of God so uh, and I know it's time to be really memorizing what you can doing what you can for the gospel in your neighborhood doing what you can while you can because all these things going on around us, these uh, the lightning storms and volcanoes and storms moving in the sea and volcanoes. Oh, oh it's going to be fire this time, guys. Fire this time. So I'm going to go ahead and let my husband get into the Bible. And we're going to get into uh, Mark 13. Uh, we're going to be reading 1 to 27. Uh, not the whole entire chapter. Almost the whole entire chapter, but not quite. Uh, what am we going to... Uh, 13 1 to 27 because you know i just love it i just love that we're getting so close we was getting so close and i just love it so tired of the sin in the world so the sin in the land i'm just so tired of it like i said everything's on fire already things are cranking up on fire so we need to be getting on fire for yeshua we need to be getting on fire oh uh, you know it's really time to get on fire for yeshua because this world oh man who wants this world who wants this world i don't want it anymore i don't like like it anymore mm -hmm. it's just so much evil so much evil so uh father be with us as we go to mark uh 13 uh and read it to the people we thank you so much for your promises father your protection over our people, over the uh, people who've been sick in the uh, body of Christ, and uh, you can healing them, delivering them, and helping them, and got my granddaughter back home safe. We just thank you for all the things you do. So we know much prayer, much power. So we just thank you so much for all you do for your people and all you do for us, Father. We ask you blessings in your name as we come into the Word right now in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. All right. Hallelujah. We'll Mark chapter 13, verse 1. As Yeshua was walking away from the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, look at the wonderful stones and wonderful buildings. He said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left on another, which will not be demolished. As he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, Jacob, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? What will be the sign when all these things are about to happen? Yeshua began to say to them, Be careful that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am, yeah. and they will lead many astray. Yeah. When you hear of wars and intelligence reports of wars, mm -hmm. do not worry. These things must happen, but the end is not yet. Yeah. We've been there for <laughs> years now. For ethnicity will rise against ethnicity and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many places. 
and famines and riots. These are the beginnings of birth pains. Is that not what we've seen over the last many yeah. years? <laughs> be on your guard. They will deliver you up to the Sanhedrin, and you will be beaten in sanctuaries. You will stand before both governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them. But the good news must be proclaimed to all the ethnicities. When they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry about what you should say. For in that hour, you, you, what you should say shall be given to you. It will not be you who speak, but Ruach HaKodesh. Yes. <laughs> brother will deliver a brother to death and a father his child. Children will rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. You'll be hated by everyone because of my name. But whoever endures to the end, that person will be saved. Yes, yes. Now, does that explain once saved, always saved right there? <laughs> right. There it is. <laughs> Have to endure to the endure end. Endure to the end and That's you'll right. be saved. Mm -hmm. When you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it should not be standing, let the reader understand. Let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down into the house or take anything out of it. And let him who is in the field not return to take his tallit. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that it might not occur in the winter. For there will be tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning, when Yahuwah created the world, until now, no, nor ever will be again. Unless Yahuwah had shortened the days, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those whom he chose, he cut short the days. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and will give signs and wonders mm -hmm. so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That's going on now. <laughs> Be on guard. I have told you all these things ahead of time. But after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the asteroids will fall from the sky, and the powers that are in the heavens will be shaken. Yes, yes. Then they will see the Son of the Virgin coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send his angels, and he will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the sky. Oh, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. right here. This is the rapture experience right here, folks. See that? Right. And where's the timing element for this rapture? <laughs> it's right here. But after, after the, the tribulation, tribulation of those days. Right. So the timing for the rapture event <laughs> is after the tribulation. <laughs> Memorize that. You can have some good conversations. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and finish here because time is really going quickly again. I'm going to go ahead to the Maranatha. I have a wonderful message here from Maranatha. We're going to be looking at the glories of the heavenly world. The glories of the heavenly world. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let the gentleman speak and let you guys go and enjoy the Shabbat coming in. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, mute this out. <clears throat> November 20, the glories of the heavenly world. Since the beginning of the world, men have not seen nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Isaiah 64, 4. Many have longed to penetrate into the glories of the future world and to have the secrets of eternal mysteries disclosed to them, but they knock in vain. That which is revealed is for us and for our children. The great revealer hath opened to our intelligence many things that are essential in order that we may understand the heavenly attractions and have respect to the recompense of the reward. The unfoldings of Jesus in reference to heavenly things are of a character that only the spiritual mind can appreciate. The imagination may summon its utmost powers in order to picture the glories of heaven. But I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2 9. The heavenly intelligences are all around us. Angels of light create a heavenly atmosphere about the soul, lifting us toward the unseen and eternal. We cannot behold their forms with our natural sight. Only by the spiritual vision can we discern heavenly things. Our human powers would be extinguished by the inexpressible glory of the angels of light. The spiritual ear alone can distinguish the harmony of heavenly voices. 
It is not Christ's plan to excite the emotions by brilliant descriptions. He has with sufficient distinctness presented himself the way, the truth, and the life as the only means whereby salvation is to be obtained. No more than this is really required. He might bring the human soul to the threshold of heaven and through the open door show us its inner glory flooding the heavenly sanctuary and shining out through its portals. But we must behold it by faith, not with the natural eyes. He does not forget that we are his human agents to work the works of God in a world all seared and marred with this sick curse. It is in this world that is clothed with moral darkness like the pall of death where darkness covers the earth and gross darkness of people that we are to walk in the light of heaven. Walk in the light, beautiful light. <laughs> we got to come over here and start singing sometime. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, end the video, guys. I hope you guys have seen the book. I really do. Uh, I just wanted to share some of my testimonies, and that's what the book is about. Uh, buy my ebook title, He Did What, from Amazon.com, Apple, Google, Kobo.com, Lulu.com, Bonds and Noble. Uh, the link is there in front of you. Uh, it should be listed for $2.99. If you see it listed for more than that, let us know. Download all our ebooks from fmcmi.org slash downloads. Uh, also, uh, Son of Man Bible, download Gene's free e-bible from lulu.com. Kobo.com, Smashers.com, Scribd.com, FMCMI.org. Read the Son of Man Bible PDF for free. Download the Son of Man Bible Computer Bible Modulars for free. Download free at BibleSupport.com and WordModulars.com. Uh, King James Version Bible. Download Gene's free Son of M the Version King James Version uh, Bible Modular form from uh, BibleSupport.com, WordModulars.com, and FMCMI.org slash downloads. One modular is, you know, he got one in the Apocrypha and one without the Apocrypha. Uh, okay, so thank you for all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need in mission fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you. Uh, FMI, FMCMI, Alternative Channels, Rumble.com, BitChute.com, Facebook.com, FMCMI.org. Uh, donate by Cash App, our cash tag. Uh, also, website, fmcmi.org, marner.camel at gmail.com at PayPal. Uh, mailing your donations to Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Shipping address, Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Uh, click subscribe to like bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the like button, click the notification bell, our digital business card, uh, also most son of man Bible links, and our hashtags. So I'm going to have to go, guys, let you guys go. Uh, we thank you so much for all the prayers. I really appreciate it. This month's offerings are going to California, actually. Uh, we've been supporting the homeless women's ministry over there this month uh, with Bibles. Uh, you know, we just send a case of Bibles out, uh, uh, all the contributions, and uh, also homeless people. Uh, we've been finding a few here and there, but we've been sending them to California this month and going to send some other Bibles probably to Tennessee here not long from now. But we uh, always want your donations to come in to help the homeless, the widows, the orphans. So we really appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys go, and I want you just to enjoy your Shabbat and have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbat. A wonderful, wonderful Shabbat, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and let my husband pray, and then we're going to let you guys go, okay? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this video and everybody gets to view it. Father, we just thank you for bringing us to the end. Help us all to stay in faith, Father. Stay in faith and yes. endure to our end. We only have to endure to our own end. I can't endure for anybody else and they can't endure for me. We all endure to our end. Help us to do that, Father, in total faith. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor forever and ever. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen, amen. So. Guys, you have a wonderful Shabbat, and uh, we will be always praying for you guys as, we, as you pray for us. I'm trying to find my, <laughs> okay. So we're going to just say Shabbat Shalom, and we'll see you on another video. Uh, please look at the other links in the description box. I always put additional news links there as well. So you guys have a wonderful Sabbath. I love you guys so much. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye.